Welcome to America's Spaceport, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where that Dragon spacecraft sitting on top of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will launch Crew-7 to the International Space Station. You can see Jasmine Wogbelli there with her visor down. And the suit inflated, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So she is in the midst of her pressure check and looks to me like everything is going well. But of course, we want to make sure that those suits have good integrity in the event that we would ever have to use them on board the vehicle. There's Andy Mogensen sitting to her right. His visor's still up, so it looks like perhaps his test has not been initiated yet. And I believe they do perform these one at a time. So Andy has a few minutes there just to kind of relax. You can see the Danish flag on the left of Andy's suit because he is a European Space Agency astronaut, mm -hmm. and he is from Denmark. And now you're looking at Mission Specialist Satoshi Furukawa giving us a big wave and a big smile and the thumbs up. Last but not least, Mission Specialist Konstantin Borisov was selected to be a cosmonaut in 2018, and this will be his first trip to space along with Jasmine. And here they come, the astronauts walking down the hallway at astronaut crew quarters. Three astronauts, one cosmonaut of Crew 7 waving as they go by into the elevator, headed down to the first floor behind them. Joe Acaba, I believe that's Norm Knight with it the is. Flight Operations Directorate. It is. Core on countdown, crew walkout and suit up room departure is in progress on schedule. It's impossible to not smile when you're watching them walk out with those <laughs> smiles on their faces, isn't it? It's contagious. And here they come, Crew 7, taking their first steps outside before their journey to space. go. You can see some of the NASA, the NASA administrator there, Bill Nelson, Bob Cabana's there, the associate administrator. We mentioned Pam Melroy already. Everybody's there to cheer them on, send them on their way. Of course, the astronauts have been in quarantine for the past two weeks, so that's why they're standing a set distance away from their family and loved ones. Yeah, that's right. We want to make sure that, of course, we don't carry any viruses or anything like that with, a, with us to the space station. So everybody has been in this strict kind of quarantine protocol leading up to the space flight and they're continuing to keep their distance now. A double kiss from Jasmine. I but Andy's family actually lives just a street away from me, so I see oh, them quite often. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Here they go. Doors are closing. So in the first Tesla, we've got the closeout lead and two suit technicians. In the second, the commander and pilot. And the third, the mission specialist, one and two. And bye, they go. Bye, <laughs> bye. I think you need a longer bye. <laughs> you nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go with our uh, commander and pilot, Jasmine and Andreas, making their way out for a view of the rocket. And there it is, that traditional lean back. You've got to try to take it all in, and it's a tall rocket. And they've got, a, as I understand it, a very rigid back to the spacesuit, which yeah. prevents them from actually turning their heads up. So you've got to turn your entire upper torso Right, and it, right? That, with the helmet being integrated onto the suit, it right. adds that stiffness as well. You know, I remember these moments getting ready for my launch, and it's interesting because people ask all the time, you know, how do you feel? Are you scared? But the thing is, we are so well trained. We've gone through all of these motions so many times that even for me, when I was well into sitting in the vehicle, looking at my displays, monitoring things, hitting buttons. You know, you're going through all of these training protocols and it just feels like another simulation. Mm -hmm. I actually had to remind myself that this one was going to be real, <laughs> that it was going to end a little bit differently. All right, there are two mission specialists, Konstantin Borisov and Satoshi Furukawa. Taking it in. I think getting a lot of looks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big wave, thumbs up. It's interesting about that elevator when they go in. 
if they were to ask you, which floor would you like? There's actually a button that says space. Yeah. They <laughs> changed the 255-foot level to space. Uh, which floor? Uh, space, please. Oh, yeah, right away. Let me punch that up for you. Always the best button that you want to press. But only the four of them will be making that final step to space. Everybody else has to come back down the elevator. That's right. And there is Jasmine Mobelli, the commander, and Andreas Mogensen, our pilot, making their way across the crew access arm into the white room where they'll get into the spacecraft. But first, Coron sign that down. A crew have arrived at the white room and are preparing for ingress. We are on schedule. Yeah, that other tradition that we talked about. There's the last signature that they'll have to dole out before they get all strapped in. Now there go our pilot and commander carefully getting in. They don't want to mess up that seal, so you'll see him take a lot of time to crawl over that entryway, the side hatch. And here come our mission specialists. On the left, Cor Konstantin Borisov. And on the right, Satoshi Furukawa. They're even dancing their way down the hallway. Oh, they're loving it. Oh, another tradition. A lot of times um, our astronauts and Constantine here, you can see taking the name tags of mm -hmm. some of their ground support personnel and they'll be flying those to space with them. That's got to be really special for those technicians. Absolutely. I mean, they're playing such a critical role, you know, especially those connections you have with those people in those moments leading up to your launch really has a, an incredibly strong bond you have with those people. Any good astronaut or cosmonaut always has a Sharpie with them. I don't think there's a Sharpie pocket on this suit, but the technicians are handing them Sharpies to get this job done. Yes, in fact, it's on the to-do list. <laughs> Make sure that the Sharpie is in the white room. And you saw briefly Satoshi holding his arm up and those zippers. They have zippers on each arm, zippers on the leg. Those got to be zipped up nice and secure so that that pressure suit functions exactly as needed. Yeah, there's actually two layers of zippers. That was probably just the external one. So mm -hmm. there's a redundancy there. The main pressure is held by the, the lower set, the more internal set of zippers. Another critical component of the way we do Core on countdown. Seat one and seat four are beginning their ingress into Dragon. We are on schedule. You know, safety always comes first. We always have a lot of built-in redundancy to each system, including the spacesuits, to make sure that we can keep everyone on board safe. Another big difference that I'm sure Andy and Satoshi are feeling right now is the difference of the seats between Dragon and the, the Soyuz spacecraft. You know, you have a much more natural kind of sitting position in Dragon, a lot roomier for you to stretch your legs a little bit. You know, their heels will actually be kind of clipped in. Not clipped, but there's a little uh, a little runner there that you slide your heel in. It's a little notch in the boot. You slide that onto the boot plate to help secure your feet for the launch and landing process. But while they're sitting there on the launch pad, they can take a foot out if they want, stretch a little bit, and, and move around. Kind of like a, a ski, a ski boot and a ski, or, or a, you know, cycling shoes that have yeah. those... Yeah, yeah, kind of like that cycling shoe, but a little bit of a different mechanism. It's just kind of a front-to-back slide. Mm. You can see Andy looking up at the displays there. Looks like he's configuring something or, or checking uh, some something on the monitors. And Satoshi and Constantine getting strapped in. 
They have their little satchels, that's what they call them on their knee there. They have a, a tablet, so they have procedures on the tablet. Any, a few, if they have a few small items that they might need during the ascent, they can have them in that little satchel as well. So there they go. With the big wave as they rotate the seats upwards so they can be better configured for launch, of course, and also they'll be able to see their display panels directly in front of them. Yeah, and the main reason why we want to launch and land in that position is for the G-forces, the gravitational forces that we experience. You know, get up to three or four Gs on launch and landing, on a nominal launch and, and landing. And when you take those G-forces through your chest, so when, you, when you're on your back, you're coming, those forces are coming straight down, so they're hitting through your chest. That's much easier to deal with than if you were sitting straight up, then they were hitting your head. That would really drive the blood out of your head, and that's why, you know, if you're flying a jet, that kind of Dragon thing. Dragon SpaceX, seats are in the launch position. You are go for Section 2, suit leak check preparation. SpaceX Dragon copies, proceeding to Section 2, suit leak check preparation. Now, now about two minutes and 30 seconds until launch. Next milestone, we're looking up for stage two locks load to complete. Additionally, shortly after that, we'll hear gas closeout begin, isolating the feed lines from the different gas systems for the Falcon 9 rocket. Those will get oh, vented overboard through the umbilicals and the strong back itself. Stage two, lock floating is complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Confirmation that stage two, locks load is complete. Dragon and Falcon 9 fully fueled. Gas closeout has started. Expect live venting. There's the gas closeout call that we expected. Additionally, we will be in auto idle. This puts the rocket in a state the flight computers understand before it takes over, making sure the transition to final countdown is smooth. Coming up at T minus one minute, we'll hear that Dragon is in countdown. Its computer will switch to countdown mode. We'll also hear that the flight termination system on Falcon 9 is armed. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon's in terminal count. Dragon's flight computer in countdown and configured for launch, and the flight termination system now armed less than a minute until liftoff today. Dragon, the flight termination go system. Go for launch. Dragon, happy, go for launch. You heard it. Crew 7 getting the go for launch. Just 30, 30 seconds, seconds away for an on-time launch. At the time of liftoff today, the space station will be flying 260 miles over southeastern Iraq. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine full power. And this off. Go Falcon, go Dragon, go Crew 7. Endurance ascends an international crew Copy, destined alpha. for the International Space Station. Stage one That's propulsion 1 is nominal. Million. Good calls from the propulsion officers here. Propulsion's nominal. 1.7 million pounds of thrust on Falcon 9, taking Crew 7 to the International Space Station, now traveling almost 300 miles per hour. Nominal power and telemetry. We are just about T plus 45 down. seconds. 
into the seventh rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. And right now the vehicle is throttling down to help us pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. There's the call out that Crew 7 is now moving faster than the speed of sound. Stage one, throttle up. Confirmation, we have moved through max Q and are throttling back up. Copy, one Bravo. Heard that call from Jasmine on Crew 7, as well as confirmation from the ground. The call out for one Bravo means we are in the second and final abort mode for the first MVAC stage, chill and continuing is to get good performance. We've got in, uh, engine chill on the second stage MVAC engine. We will then be looking for MECO or main engine cutoff where the nine engines on the first stage will cut off ahead of the first and second stages separating. Then the, not, the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite. We are now coming up on two minutes into the flight, the spacecraft traveling over 2,000 miles per hour. Really incredible nighttime views of Falcon 9 and Crew 7 on your screen right now. So as Leah just mentioned, we are keeping an eye on a couple of critical flight milestones coming up back to back here. Stage one, Those down. are going to be Miko. So main engine cutoff now that we're throttling down stage one, followed by stage separation and second stage ignition. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Copy, two alpha. And back ignition. So there you heard and saw Miko stage sep, and hopefully you heard Jasmine call out for the two alpha abort mode just before second stage ignition. And of course, this is the second stage powering Dragon on its flight, now traveling almost 4,000 miles per hour. Over three minutes since launch, the second stage will continue to power the spacecraft. And our first look at the crew inside. We'll be standing by for Seco. That's the next major milestone for this second stage engine that comes shortly before nine minutes into the flight. So we've still got some time on this engine. So right now, while Crew 7 makes its way to orbit, our first stage booster is making its way back to land. So you may hear the call outs here on the net shortly that we are in the middle of our boost back burn. Right now, stage Dragon, one is coasting. Dragon, SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Good call outs there that Dragon is on the right track. <laughs> and confirmation from Commander Jasmine McBelly. Continuing to see good performance on this lone Merlin vacuum engine on the stage. Also, as we've heard, nominal trajectory, that's the guidance navigation and control officer here at SpaceX stating that we are on the correct path. Dragon's pointed in the right direction. The second stage continues firing until, like we mentioned, second stage engine cutoff at about eight minutes and 50, five zero seconds into the flight. Right now, we are four minutes and 30 seconds since our on-time liftoff, now traveling at 5,000 miles per hour. This single Merlin vacuum engine can provide over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space, doing its job to take our crew to the International Space Station today. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. More good news for Mission Control. Acquisition of signal, Marina. So with that Bermuda call out, we actually know that the ground station transmitting this flight data back to us is coming from Bermuda. The crew is currently pulling a little more than one G as the second stage engine continues to propel their flight. Continuing to hear good calls to the crew, now five minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, traveling at 6,400 miles per hour. Again, we will continue to see the second stage fire for about three more minutes. 
Shortly after second stage engine cutoff, we will see it separate Dragon. from Please Dragon, which will continue its line. journey. Now, at this point in the flight, we are just about 15 seconds away from stage one entry burn start. At this point, the center engine on Falcon 9 will be lit for just about 10 seconds to help us slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. That's not the only thing helping us on re-entry, though. The first stage sees high drag on re-entry, which scrubs roughly 70% of the velocity by the time the landing burn begins, which you just had great views of on the left-hand side of your screen. Florida Space Coast beginning to come into view in the background. All while Crew 7, of course, on the right-hand side of your screen, lit up by that MVAC engine, continues on its way to orbit. And we are now coming up on... Continuing to get good calls as we reach almost seven minutes into the flight. Crew traveling at 9,400 miles per hour. Again, we still have about one minute, 45 seconds left with the second stage propelling the crew. And of course, we are also expecting that landing burn start from Falcon 9 any second now. Great views. Stage two, FTS has saved. Great news there that stage one has successfully landed back at landing zone one in Florida. And stage two continues to propel Dragon and our crew seven crew members we now are coming up on Seco, second stage engine cutoff. Again, looking at that about eight minutes and 50 seconds into the flight. Everything continues as planned today, now traveling over 13,000 miles per hour. Again, we're looking for eventually a good orbital insertion at which we'll be traveling. Good calls here at Mission Control in Hawthorne. And we are standing by for second stage engine cutoff. Copy, Shannon. Heard that call for Shannon. That is the call out for Shannon Ireland, the final abort zone. MVAC shut down. There's audio confirmation, and you can see on your screen that we have had successful second engine cutoff one of our MVAC engine. Dragon SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. Dragon. And good news there that Crew 7. Nominal orbital insertion. Dragon SpaceX. Awesome to hear. Disarmed. That's the first look at the crew, now in microgravity, confirmation of a good Earth orbit insertion. We are now coming up on 10 minutes into the flight. Of course, we saw second stage engine cutoff, and you're actually getting a look at their zero-G indicator there. Uh, we'll stand by for them to tell us a little bit more about that shortly, but we are also standing by for second stage separation from Dragon. So as Leah mentioned right now, Dragon and Stage 2 are still attached. Great views of that zero-G indicator there. And what we're doing right now is basically letting any residual dynamics of the vehicle settle out prior to separation. We are expecting that separation event in probably about 90 seconds. Crew looks like they're having a great time up in space, too. And as we stand by for that separation, shortly thereafter, we'll be looking for the nose cone to begin deploying. Uh, that command will be sent, and we'll see it open shortly after. 
We'll need the nose cone to open to expose those forward bulkhead thrusters, as well as the docking mechanism with which they will use to uh, link up with the International Space Station. After their ride, it's almost 30 hours long. Again, we had liftoff right on time today at 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. The crew making a smooth journey into orbit. It's now been 11 minutes, 20 seconds since that liftoff. We had confirmation of good orbital insertion, and we are standing by for second stage separation from Dragon. Dragon separation from Crew 7, on behalf of the Falcon gone. team, I'd like to welcome you to orbit, and we hope you enjoyed the ride on Falcon 9. Space travel is difficult, even though you make it look easy, so thank you for trusting us to get you up there. It's not a bad way to spend a day in the office. Stand by for words from the launch director. Hello, Crew 7. This is launch director here on Countdown. On behalf of the entire SpaceX launch and recovery team, I'm honored to welcome Dragon's first ever all-international crew to orbit. Shisleva Puti. Gotor Itera Shai. Godspeed, Crew 7. Cheers. SpaceX, uh, thanks for the ride. It was awesome. On behalf of Andy, Satoshi, Koshi, and I, we'd like to thank the multitude of people who've led us to this unique moment. We may have four crew members on board from four different nations, Denmark, Japan, Russia, and the USA, but we're a united team with a common mission. And we hope the do serve to benefit our beautiful home planet and those on it. As you said, human spaceflight requires an unparalleled level of vigilance and rigor, and we thank all those who prepared not only us, but also this truly impressive spacecraft for flight. Finally, to our families, carry the brave, greater burden of our choice to explore. Thank you. Go Crew 7. Awesome ride. You saw the uh, zero-G indicator floating around. Tell us what it was. I did. Well, that, Daryl, was a three-toed sloth. Important, a three -toed. Uh, important distinction, not oh. a two-toed sloth. Oh, really? Yeah, so apparently this is one of Andy's kids' favorite animals. And as a family, they were even fortunate enough to see one in the wild in Costa Rica last Christmas uh, when they were on vacation. So it was all kind of fate leading up to this, I think. How about that? This is Andy uh, Mogensen. Andy Mogensen, the pilot. That's yeah. correct. That's right. And I guess his family calls him the slowest person in the world. So another reason why <laughs> this three-toed sloth had such meaning for all of them. Hey, I'm always uh, the last to leave the house whenever we're going anywhere. Personally, I think it's with good reason. But they say I'm the slowest person alive, uh, which is also why it's a three-toed sloth, not a two-toed sloth, because apparently that would be too fast for me. So welcome to space, Sasha the Sloth. And Dragon, we appreciate the introduction to the your zero-G indicator and noting that that is uh, probably officially now the fastest sloth uh, ever. It, it, this is Satoshi. Uh, it's nice to be a, in space, and uh, I'm very glad to see happy faces. Yes, I'm very excited. First of all, a few words in Russian, then in English. Всем большое спасибо огромное в восхищении тем, как мы прокатились на ракете, мы в космосе. Невероятно. Полет в космос это результат действий скоординированных тысяч людей, которые работают в разных странах. Всем большое спасибо, большое спасибо. Роскосмос, НАСА, ИСА, Джекс, SpaceX, моим друзьям и семье большое спасибо. Thank you very much for all your hard work, SpaceX, Роскосмос, НАСА, ИСА, Джекс, and all the partners involved in manned space flight. That's a proud example of how much we can achieve working together in harmony. Let's continue. Cool. Thanks a lot to everyone, to my family as well. Thanks. SpaceX copies all. Thank you for the kind words. And Jaws, when you, if you are ready to copy, I do have some upcoming words.